Hey guys, what's up? It's Code Gamer One back with more NASCAR Thunder 2004. Uh, this is going to be episode two, and in this episode, we're going to be tackling more of the lightning challenges. Uh, the first one we're going to be covering is second times a charm at Lowe's Motor Speedway with Jamie McMurray. Uh, in case you don't know, Lowe's Motor Speedway is basically Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's just back in 2000. Three when this game was made, even though it's called NASCAR Thunder 2004, it was made in 2003. Uh, it was just branded with sponsorship from Lowe's, so. But it's Charlotte. Uh, Jamie McMurray made history by winning the 2002 Lowe's race and became the quickest winner in the modern NASCAR era. Hold off Bobby Labonte's charge with two laps to go and take the win again. Okay, and only your second Winston Cup start. You're battling for your first win at Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte. Bobby Labonte right on your tail. What are you thinking? Well, really, um, it came before that. Just wanted to make the last pit stop. Um, you know, I just knew if I could, I'd struggled the whole day on, on getting in and out of the pits, and I knew if I could get in and out and, and not make a big mistake that, that we were going to be in pretty good shape. Well, what, what do you do when you got a guy like Bobby Labonte biting on your heels? What's your mindset? Well, just trying to hit my marks and um, just just stay focused and, and not really worry about him behind me. It's so easy to, to worry about what the guy is doing behind you and, and not really focus on what you need to be doing. So really just tried to look at the windshield and not pay attention behind me. Well, you're going into your rookie full rookie season in 2003. Rookie of the year honors obviously a goal. What about other goals you have set for your team? Well, just to be consistent and, and not run well just at mile-and-a-half tracks. That seems to be where Ganassi is the strongest at, but, but to try to run well at road courses, short tracks, and, and the super speedways also. Well, let's get in the game and try to see if you can get him that first win at Charlotte like he got himself that. Even the drivers that back then called it Charlotte because you, you saw uh, Waltrip call it Charlotte, so... Lowe's was just the sponsorship at the time. Alrighty. Two laps at Charlotte to hold the lead. Car seems pretty loose, actually. Prefer that to a tight car. Although, it's going to be tight when you drive it in too hard. No matter how loose it, it... Thanks, Stuart! What the hell was that? I barely touched him and he went up the track. That was not enough to force him up the track. He did that. That is not the line you want to be running. Not, not the line you want to be running again. Man, I gotta get faster in, in the center of the corner there. Giving up too much on entry. Stuart came down in front of me there. Got to get a good run out of four. Ooh, can we get there? Nope. Alright. Temp three. I got to hold that low line and not let them get there. White flag. Ooh, it's very loose out of turn four. What? That's part of the track! Are you kidding me? Okay, I can't use the low line going through the tri oval, I guess. That's interesting.
Not the greatest three and four. Got loose on the exit again. Oh. Here comes Bobby. Ooh, slight contact with the wall. Gonna try and cut down in front of Bobby. Oh, got down too much. Got to get a good run out of four. Let's try not to get too loose. And I think we're going to have the run. Finally. Took like four tries. One of them I should have had it, I think, though. It said no because we got too low going through the trial, I guess. Even though that's clearly part of the track. And we've unlocked Veteran Challenges, and we've unlocked Dale Earnhardt. Oh, and I forgot to look up between episodes how to unlock the fantasy tracks. All right, so close. Infineon Raceway, Jerry Nadu. Jerry Nadu was in position to win the 2002 Infineon race when the when the rear end broke with three laps remaining. This time, the car will hold together. Hold off Ricky Rudd with one to go for the win. Jerry, last year at Sears Point, you had it one, five second lead, couple laps to go and the car breaks. Explain the disappointment. I tell you what, it was pretty frustrating, but uh, overall we had a great car. We were running well, we were leading the race, we had a five second lead over Ricky Rudd, and uh, coming off the last turn, gear broke. It's one of those deals in Winston Cup racing. You always seem to, to be great at the road courses. Could you give us some tips? Well, I think a lot of it is that growing up, I did a lot of road racing. I, I started out in go-karts. I went overseas and raced over there in open wheel cars. And I think that helped out a lot when I got into Winston Cup racing. So uh, I had a good lead. I was uh, moving right along there. Well, listen to this. I got some good news for you. The oh. car's not going to break this time. You got five seconds over Ricky Rudd, just a couple laps to go. Can you hold him off and get the win? I think I can. I'm just going to stay smooth. Try not to be too aggressive, but then I got to stay on top of my game. So I'm just going to not make sure I, I not miss a gear, go easy on the brakes, and just be smooth and bring it home in victory lane. He's going to be on top of his game. Let's get in the game. All right. First encounter with a road course. Infineon's my favorite of the two that they go to. I mean, I really like Watkins Glen, but Infineon is a much more technical track, and I like that. All right, here we go. You got the lead. All right, and it's the current layout. Well, kind of current layout, too. I was afraid it was going to be the old layout that they used to run. Ooh. Okay. Very tight through there. have to slow down a lot more than you think you do. Alright, I have a big lead. Let's just make sure we get it around. I don't know if that area to the left is considered off the track, so I'm trying not to go over there. Oh, okay, that didn't slow down as fast as I thought I would for that corner. Oh, oh, too much through there. Shoot. All right, that's okay. Not gonna get every corner right when I'm learning how to drive the track in this game. A learning experience still. Uh, ooh. Yep, okay, that's not considered part of the track. Which is stupid because they use that area all the time. Okay. That's another thing I really liked about this game. They had the PA announcer actually at the track. 
in the game. White flag, one lap to go. Can he do it? Go easy on those eagles, driver. Always added another uh, layer of immersion, I felt. Oh, I have to take that corner so much slower than I want to because I can't use the runoff area. Oh, that corner is way tighter than it turn. is it. actually, I think. Alright, let's get this corner right for the first time. Hopefully. Oh, nope. Still a little bit too fast. I feel like I'm crawling around this track. Ooh, even that's a little bit too fast. Alright, one more corner to get right. And yeah, that was decent. And that's that challenge down. It was a slow lap, though. <laughs> Look at the best lap in the bottom right corner. It was a 111, and that was a 114. Gonna have to figure out how to drive that track better. Alan Kulwicki. That's cool. Alright, so third challenge of the video, defending champ at Talladega Super Speedway as Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman won the 2002 EA Sports NASCAR Thunder Challenge by defeating Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick. Adding Jeff Gordon to the lineup, you get two laps to defend his title. Ryan, 2002 was a big year. Nothing any bigger than winning the launch party, though, right? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, racing against Jimmy and uh, Jeff and Kevin there, we had a lot of fun. Uh, 2003 game's pretty awesome in the EA Sports, and uh, just had a lot of fun that night. What, uh, what about tips that you learn on the racetrack that equates to the game and then back from the game to the track? Like always, you got to be smooth, Michael. <laughs> I mean, you got to be smooth on your thumbs. you got to be smooth on, on the racetrack. And, and uh, you're driving the car with a controller, and it's no different than a steering wheel. So that had to help you as far as the way you present yourself at the game. Helped you when you won the Winston. Helped you win <laughs> New Hampshire. You won a lot of races last year. Yeah, you too. You know how smooth you got to be. And, um, you know, it's it's just a lot of fun. The game's so realistic. You know, you got drafting involved and the, the way the car's set up. And it's just a lot of fun. Let's get in the game. You want to? I'm in the game. Cars in this game do not handle realistic, especially with a controller. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. It's not, it's not a state-of-the-art handling model, is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, if you go too fast into a corner, it's not going to make the corner, but... It's definitely not iRacing level physics. And when I think realistic driving, I think iRacing level physics. a small four car challenge, huh? Car Number 29 is right behind you. Okay, we're clear. Trying to draft back up there. Ooh, Jimmy. We got to run on Gordon here. We gotta play defense. 
Harvick's falling off a little bit. Jimmy's trying to make a run at us. Gordon's kind of falling off, so we really only have to worry about Jimmy now. I think if we just hold the low line, we'll have him. And that's that challenge done. Woohoo! We unlocked Stanton Barrett. Alright, two more challenges for this video. Alright, do over at Pocono Raceway with Ricky Rudd. For the second week in a row, Ricky Rudd blew a tire while leading with only a few laps left. This time, the tire will not blow. And Ricky will have to pass, pass Jeff Burton with two laps left for the win. Ricky appeared a couple of times last summer. You had races in the bags, and you cut tires. What's that feel like? Well, Michael, it's probably the, you know the biggest disappointment of your life. You're, you know, you've got the adrenaline flowing. You're, you look like you got things under control. Look like you're, you know, shaping up to win the race, and all of a sudden it just ends, just like that, like you, like you flip a switch. It's, uh, it's hard to put it in words, but it's a tremendous disappointment. It seems like you've got Pocono figured out. You really know how to get around that place. Tell us some tips about Pocono. Well, Pocono is like a big road course, and road courses have been pretty good to me over the years, but Pocono is pretty simple. You drive it down in turn one, use a lot of brake, jam a gear, da downshift one gear, make the turn, and then up the next straightaway. It's a lot of, you know, a lot of horsepower helps a lot at, at Pocono. Uh, tunnel turn, uh, some guys shift, some guys don't. We leave it in high gear. Uh, actually, leave it in third gear, run through that corner, and uh, keep the momentum going as much as you can. Keep the car really rolling. Uh, keep that speed up as much as you can so you enter the short shoot with a lot of speed. Uh, besides that, you hit the last corner, just keep the car uh, keep the car rolling. That's probably the biggest trick to, to Pocono. I got some good news for you. There's a couple laps to go at Pocono. You're not going to cut a tire this time. You're going to try to win the race. Can you do it? Well, we're up for the challenge. Let me put it that way. Let's get in the game. All right. I feel like Pocono isn't going to be the easiest track in the world in this game, but we're going to give it our best shot. Hang in there, buddy. Just one more spot to go. The 88 cars. Ooh, here comes bumper. Dale. Car Ooh, it's tight. Ooh, doing a little crossover on Dale Jarrett. Number 88 is outside. All right, on to Jeff Burton. Oh, he broke way early. Take care of those Goodyear Eagles. The 99 car, it's up high. Was not expecting him to break that early. Gonna block him a little bit now. Get into turn three. A little loose on entry there. And tight on exit. Oh, come on, don't hit the wall. Had to get way out of it. They're going to have a run on me down this straightaway. It's long straightaway. Ooh, a little loose. Tight on exit again. Seems really loose on entry and tight on exit. Two more turns to go. Ooh, okay. Maybe Jeff Burton did break at a good time. We're gonna have to fight Dale Jarrett through turn three. Oh, Jarrett, give me some room. All right, first try. One more challenge to go in this video. Oh, we got Ron Horn today.
All right, 41st to 1st at Daytona International Speedway as Elliott Sadler. Elliott Sadler stayed calm after starting the 2002 Daytona 500 in 41st place and drafted his way to a 2nd place finish. With one more lap, can you get around Ward Burton for the win? Elliot, the Daytona 500 is the biggest race of the year. Last year, you started in the back and finished in the front. How'd you pull that off? <laughs> That's a pretty confusing thought, ain't it? Um, just being patient, staying in line all day, drafting with guys like you that I know that are going to the front, kind of uh, just picking a line and staying in it. And you stay in that line, save your tires on the outside, and just kind of work your way forward. We missed a big wreck. That was a big part of it. Then we ended up being okay. Now, obviously, if you could pull off a victory in the Daytona 500, it's huge. I know. Um, what, what would it mean to you? What is the, when you think of the Daytona 500, what's that mean? I think that's something that can definitely change your career as a race car driver, to have that sit on your mantle at home. And uh, that's something that seems like every time they introduce you, you are the such and such year Daytona 500 winner. And I know what it's done for your career and, and, and helped you with your confidence and all this on the speedway. It seems like you've taken off since that. So um, it'd be a big win uh, for you and your team. It's something that your team works all winter for. And um, it'd be great to be able to give that feeling back to them to come to victory lane, right? That's exactly right. I like the way you said that. Listen, there's two laps to go. He's behind Burton. Let's see if we can get Elliott Sadler around Ward Burton to win the Daytona 500. All right, this is our first time seeing Daytona in this game. Man, I love Daytona. It's probably the track in iRacing that I have my most wins at. <laughs> Let's finish. One to go. Let's try and make a move on Ward. Oh, he's blocking us. Might have to wait until the back stretch. I don't want to take the high line. Alright, gonna try and fake him out, go for the high line. And then shoot low. Oh, smart about it. Try and get him inside of him. There we go. Abused the apron a little bit there, but he did leave a little bit of room for me to get down there. Ooh, got to block him. Ooh, touched the wall a little bit. It's going to cut a little bit of speed off. And there we go. That was actually pretty easy. All right. Well, that's going to be the last one for... Oh, there's a there's a fantasy track. Sawmill Speedway. I remember that one being pretty fun. It's a nice, short, little road course. So I think you just randomly get your Thunder Plates. I don't think there's anything specific you have to do. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, you guys. And I'll see you next time where we'll be doing the next five Lightning Challenges, which will be uh, at 2002 Homestead with Tony Stewart. Uh, Daytona with Michael Waltrip, uh, Darlington with Ricky Craven, Texas with Ricky Rudd, and oh, I guess that's the last of the rookie challenges. So I guess in the next video we'll be doing four challenges instead of five, because uh, there's really no reason to move forward at that point. I'd rather just finish this up, finish up rookie, and then leave veteran for the next video. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in episode three.